Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a quick look at the differences between the variable intra and extra thoracic obstructions, examples of them, and how and why they affect our flow volume loops the way that they do. In part two of this video, we will take a look at fixed obstructions and obstructive and restrictive lung diseases. So let's get started. Now, we should know before anything else that they're called variable obstructions because they cause variable degrees of obstruction throughout the respiratory cycle, depending on their location, their severity, and which part of the respiratory cycle that we're in. So as you can see, I've already written, we're going to start with our variable extra thoracic obstructions. And these are going to be lesions in the airway, like right here, before it enters the thoracic cavity. So before it enters the thoracic cavity. Some examples include subglottic stenosis, tracheal tumors, goiters, because they'll press down by their mass effect, and vocal cord paralysis. So as you can see, we've drawn our, our diagram of our lungs and our airway. Uh, the blue line represents the chest wall, the green our diaphragm, and the black lines our airway and our lungs, and our X there is our lesion in red. So when a patient has an extra thoracic obstruction, their problem is with inspiration. And we're gonna find out why now. Problem, inspiration. So as the patient takes a breath, pressure within the airway drops. Now remember from other videos, and I talk about this a lot, the mechanics of taking a breath involve the diaphragm contracting and moving caudally this way. And hopefully we all remember that pressure equals force over area. And as we increase our area, our pressure goes down. And so as our diaphragm contracts and goes down, our intrathoracic pressure decreases because the area of the thoracic cavity goes up. Now, this same drop in pressure also affects the alveoli and the small airways because there's less pleural pressure pushing down on the lungs because it's all being stretched out and it's allowed to expand. So I'm gonna erase these because we're gonna need them in a little bit. But again, as the intrathoracic pressure drops, so does pressure on top of the actual airways compressing them. And since there's decreased pressure on the airways, it allows air to flow in. But remember that because there's no valves anywhere in the airway, from the alveoli to the small terminal bronchioles and all the way up to the trachea. So that pressure that's felt, that drop in pressure that's felt on inspiration travels, is, is felt all the way up here in the main airway, in the extra thoracic portion of the airway, because again, there's no valve, so it's one contiguous space. It's the same reason the right atrial pressure is the same as the central venous pressure, the same reason why you can wedge with a pulmonary artery catheter and evaluate the left atrial pressure because they're contiguous areas. And so because there's no valves between them, that same drop in pressure is felt all the way through the airway. And I'm just gonna erase this here. Now, because there's this drop in pressure through the entire airway, it actually drops below atmospheric pressure. And so what atmospheric pressure ends up doing is pushing down on that airway that's outside the chest that now the pressure has dropped in and it squishes it and causes it to narrow. Now, conversely, when these patients exhale, the force is generated from the diaphragm moving back upwards pressure onto the lungs squeezes all of the air out and it actively increases pressure so it's greater than the atmospheric pressure and allows the patient to breathe out without problems basically stenting the airway open so these patients have no problem with exhalation as a result 
So on our flow volume loop that we're going to look at over here, and we'll do it in green, they're going to have a normal expiration, but they're going to then have a stunted inspiration portion of their loop. So I'm going to go ahead and erase most of this. I'm going to leave our flow volume loop. Uh, we'll erase our chest over here and kind of redraw all this while we talk about it. But the next part that we're now going to go ahead and discuss is our intrathoracic. We'll do intrathoracic obstructions. And the problem here is expiration. And so I'll very quickly redraw our diagram here. You know, I'm quite the artist. Lung, lung, and we have our chest wall, chest wall, diaphragm. So examples of these include things like tumors of the lower trachea. within the chest, tracheal strictures, and tracheomalacia, which is softening of the cartilaginous rings of the trachea that would then allow it to become compressible. And we'll just go ahead and label where our lesion is this time. We're gonna put it right here so it's in the airway within the chest, within the thorax or intrathoracic. And like I mentioned, these patients have problems with expiration. And the reason is basically going to be the exact same as before, but since the area of the lesion is in has changed, it changes the physiology a bit. So if we have a lesion here inside the chest that I've marked with the X, when the patient exhales, I apologize, when the patient inhales, the diaphragm drops, just like it did before, and just like it always does. And just like we said, pressure equals force over area. Our area goes up, and therefore our pressure goes down. Our pleural pressure, the pressure that's pushing on the lungs, goes down because as the diaphragm drops, the area is increasing. Then air moves down and through the airways and stents the small airways open because they're under less pressure, and the pleural pressure is less. Therefore, the pressure exerted on the alveoli and the small parts of the airway or even the higher parts of the airway within the chest is lower. This, again, allows air to move in and help stent the airway open. Now, conversely, when the exhale and the diaphragm again moves back up, we again increase our intrapleural pressure such that it's squishing down on the lungs, but it's also squishing down instead of the atmospheric pressure, it's the pleural pressure that's squishing down on our lungs and our, our small airways. And as air is trying to move out, the pressure from the pleura is jamming down on this portion where this lesion is and obstructing flow outwards. So patients that have intrathoracic issues or lesions have problems with expiration. And so their flow volume loop will look normal on inspiration, but it will be stunted on expiration, like that. So if you remember nothing else from this video, remember that extra thoracic has problems with inspiration, extra has problems with inspiration, and intrathoracic has problems with expiration. Nothing else, you can remember that for a test or for something, but these are the reasons why. So that's all for the intra and extra thoracic variable obstructions. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us. Subscribe below and tune in for the next video.